Thank you. Good afternoon. I've been introduced, Peter Kelly. I'm from the UK, so I appreciate you listening to me in English. My German is terrible, so you wouldn't want to hear that. Uh, I'm going to cover uh, topology optimization at what I hope is a more practical level. What ANSYS is doing, uh, I think, is a bit different in the marketplace. We're trying to deliver uh, high-grade capabilities to designers. Um, and so I would have liked to have shown you the actual software. We're over in the far corner, and anyone's welcome to come over for a demonstration, because you really need to see the software running as to how fast it is. Um, but I've got some videos, so hopefully it'll come across from the videos that we're showing. In general, I'm going to concentrate on topology optimization, but I'll also explain the general range of optimization solutions that maybe you might be considering uh, if you want to improve the product design. But for anyone that doesn't know what topology optimization is, it's basically, can you say, weight from some geometry. So this rocker arm on the left uh, has a particular mass. And by using physics to typically, in this example, this form of topology optimization, you're removing material from where there's low stress concentrations. And you have an alternative result uh, with the same uh, performance characteristics. Uh, the obvious benefit of this is obviously that uh, you know, you're going to save weight. Um, so, early adopters of this has obviously been people like aerospace companies are particularly interested in doing this, this sort of work. But in general, the various reasons why you might want to do this, um, you know, obviously you're, uh, you want to keep the same sort of performance, but you might improve the design by lightweighting it. You may obviously reduce your material costs. If you've got a very large assembly, very heavy assembly, and you can take 5% of the material costs out, you're going to potentially save manufacturing money, maybe transportation. You know, many, many reasons why that could improve. With additive manufacturing, we're getting different ways of creating geometry, but also the opportunities of using different materials, as you'll see many other vendors uh, starting to introduce new materials. So not only can you create geometries that are difficult via traditional subtractive manufacturing, you can also have performance characteristics that are different. Um, the idea of most of these optimization techniques I'll summarize is it's the physics is driving the design decision. So the designer is getting assistance uh, rather than maybe using just their own intuition. Of course, en engineers invariably are very clever people, um, but if you can get that additional assistance uh, by giving you ideas as to where the design may be better, um, rather than just relying on intuition or experience, um, that's can, that can be particularly important. Um, so, as I mentioned, the physics can drive the optimization, uh, can change your geometry, can change the CAD. Um, it can also give you maybe deeper insights. If you're analyzing the performance uh, domain, you may actually identify something you weren't aware of, either a failure or perhaps obviously something that from a, a, an intuition point of view, you couldn't think about. Human brain can keep three, four, five parameters of influence that might change your design in their head. Mathematically, you can have as many parameters driving those sorts of decisions. So if you are using generative design as an example, which is a terminology for this area, uh, it can study areas that you either haven't got the time or the knowledge or the ability um, within your own experience. The solution that ANSYS is bringing to the market is designer-led. So the designer gets to use this. Um, ANSYS is known for delivering high-end solutions for analysis uh, users. Um, but we're expanding and giving the same sort of uh, power, but in a designer-friendly manner. I think the statistics for designers are 95% of designers aren't using simulation. So most of the geometry creation work isn't using simulation to drive those decisions. And ANSYS's agenda is to try and change that. And obviously, more people using physics, your knowledge, your know-how can build up. So again, physics-driven product development is what we're trying to push. Um, it, we also feel, uh, I hope you'll get this from the videos, that we can compress the time that it takes to do this. Um, and obviously, better results, um, more understanding. Maybe you're not just relying on possibly human bias for coming up with a good design. So in general, I'm sure there's potentially other domains, but there are typically four main areas of optimization. Um, so I've listed them, the multi-objective parameter-driven optimization, 
I caught the back end of the last presentation. You know, it was referencing things like design of experiments, building mathematical studies. This is a great area for really delving into driving your design. It maybe isn't just changing the geometry. You might be uh, running analysis of costing models or any other third-party integration of uh, some analysis or, 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 or factor that influences the design. Um, Lattice creation, you can see the structures on the right. You maybe see some examples of that in the exhibition. It's where the lattice is, again, removing material, but you sort of have a, a concentration of the geometry across the whole domain. And I'll talk about the pros and cons of each of these. Trust generation is something new that uh, we have a partner who's delivered that inside one of the ANSYS solutions, and then topology optimization, which I'll finish on. So if any of you haven't, under, uh, used multi-objective optimization, you typically have a, an array of solutions that you build up. Uh, you design of experiments is where you sample the area. You're using classic simulation, and classic simulation can have quite a long runtime. So one of the possible downsides of this approach is the compute time can be significant. The setup time can be relatively involved. You don't do this sort of simulation typically in, in minutes. It's normally hours or days to do a simulation run. Now, if, you're, if your design domains important enough to do that. Of course, you can, you can apply that technique, and it's a great solution. Um, but it is used, shall we say, sparingly, uh, when it's highly important to really, really push that design consideration. Whereas you'll see some of the other techniques are a lot quicker. Uh, with lattice, variable thickness lattice, uh, it's a bit like topology optimization, where you've got low stress, uh, you don't need as much material, so basically you'll have a thinner lattice. Um, the application space for this can be really good. It could be something like uh, the well-known one is the, the hip joint, you know, a titanium hip joint uh, has this sort of structure and the bone grows into there. Um, but it does have limitations. If you've got a, a beam structure, of course, you've got a lot of material that's there just to support the lattice, not necessarily to support the truss. So its application areas are, are a bit more niche, I would say. Good when they're needed, but it's not really a generalized type solution. Um, this truss-based example is more classic engineering. It sort of generates more, you can see in the top right, bridge-like structures. Uh, basically, you have a node of arrays, and this is this running in real time um, in an example on the, on the left here. Um, and you have a node of uh, points, and you're joining every other point with a straight line beam member, and you're iterating through trying to find the ideal solution. Um, and as, as you can see how that's progressed, it's come out with a few beam elements, um, and it's assessing it, maybe optimizing it further. Um, and then you can convert that di directly into geometry. P possible advantage of this is it can be used in additive manufacturing, but again, you could use a more uh, traditional approach of subtractive or casting uh, to produce your result. So there's the GE bracket um, with this uh, application applied, and you were saving 60% of material. Again, the big difference with that, that was running in real time. So it's achieved that result in less than a minute. Um, so that's quite unusual compared with uh, most of the other topology optimization software uh, that would produce something similar. So with topology optimization, you'll see many examples out there. You get more blobby shapes, whereas obviously you can see there's straight line elements here. And the application for this tends to be better where you've got uh, design freedom greater than 30%. So if you've got a small sort of area like a bracket, then traditional top topology optimization is pretty good. But if you've got a large beam member that's leaning over something, uh, you'll get a lot of blobby shapes with topology optimization which really aren't helping. And from an engineering perspective, a straight line beam element is probably going to be more efficient, i.e. you'll get better performance for lighter material with straight line elements. So with topology optimization, again, uh, this is an example running in the bottom left uh, with a variety of results shown next to it. Uh, I think you can all guess what it is. It's a bike helmet. Um, and you have a load characteristic. This is just a single load at the moment. Uh, and then it's removing material from certain parts uh, based on how it can dissipate that stress uh, or manage that stress within the geometry. A few other examples, you can see a, a wheel on the right. Bridge-like structures come out with some fairly exotic shapes. Um, <clears throat> and I think the, way, in the finish of this uh, example, what's happening is once the optimization reaches a certain level, it can't really improve it much. Um, at that point, you're probably happy with that design. Um, you might run mo multiple load cases, of course, um, and that could influence the type of output that you get. So, 
I hinted about this earlier. Uh, the solution that ANSYS is delivering we feel, feels a bit different. We're delivering this to the designer. Most of those techniques uh, traditionally in the marketplace from other vendors as well as ANSYS. ANSYS has been doing topology optimization, multi-objective optimization for many years. Um, they all typically have this process where the analysis person is included in the process. The designer is doing the CAD. And you have this sort of uh, combination of the geometry person passing the geometry to the analysis this guy, passing it back, and it obviously takes a certain amount of time. The traditional simulation techniques, typically, uh, if you're familiar with that, you typically have to mesh your geometry. If your geometry is very complex with lots of surfaces, you might need to simplify that geometry. That all takes time. Um, <clears throat> you've got wait time as you're transferring between the CAD and the geometry person. And then the answer you get out of a lot of the topology optimization technologies tends to be a mesh. And quite often, you actually need real-world CAD. Going back to CAD uh, is another time constraint. So you're typically talking about most people, even the quickest process uh, for topology optimization, 15, 20 minutes, sometimes a couple of hours, sometimes half a day, depending on the complexity. Um, certain vendors uh, are using the cloud to accelerate that side of things. But it's still a reasonable amount of wait time. What we've introduced in a product called ANSYS Discovery, uh, which is a new solution that's been out just under 12 months, is to give the designer these capabilities. Very easy to use, very straightforward. Um, I'm a sales guy. If anyone wishes to come for a demonstration, I can use the software. I've never done CAD, never done simulation before. It's a very productive system for being able to take advantage of uh, the physics to understand what's going on in your solution. We've written it to run on GPUs. So on my laptop, I've got uh, an NVIDIA graphics card, 1,024 cores uh, with 4 gig of video RAM. So I've got a mini HPC on my standard laptop, and that's accelerating the simulation time, which is basically giving the designer that ability to do what-if scenarios in a matter of seconds, or 20 seconds, or half a minute. So you can look at three or four iteration runs in a few minutes and come out with a design, or do a parameter study that takes five minutes to run and come out with a solution set. So roughly. You know, I don't know, 10, 50, 100 times faster than the traditional approaches. It's a very dynamic environment. You can change the design. Um, so this next slide is showing this Discovery Live product. And again, this is running in re real time. I have this example on my, my machine. So the topology optimization is running. You've got uh, a bracket with four supports, two forces in the top face, slightly uh, off center. Um, and the simulation is running and reducing the material. As, a, as you saw before, it runs for a certain length of time. If your result's appropriate, you convert that to a mesh. And then we are validating that solution. So we are running that mesh uh, and creating a stress representation um, to see whether it reaches the performance criteria you want. You're not exceeding the maximum tensile stress of that material. Uh, checking that it's deflecting in the right manner, checking it's giving the appropriate performance sort of characteristic. Uh, as I mentioned, this is inside a design tool. So now the user is just changing the design. So dynamically modifying the geometry, yet you can see that topology optimization is constantly running. So the product's called Discovery Live. The live element is that the simulation is running all the time. So as you change the design, in this case, they've changed it to have one support on one end uh, and a, a rectangle in the middle. You dynamically get the top topology optimization. So that was running for about a minute, and it ran through two or three sort of design modifications. That's the sort of speed up that we feel this is offering in the marketplace. So the physics is computed in seconds. You could do super fast parameter studies and topology optimization and change your geometry very, very quickly. So just to recap what I said at the beginning, you know, why do you want to use, utilize these sorts of techniques? It's to create a better product, you know, drive innovation, eliminate risk, come out with better quality products. And our tool set is a range of three new products, Discovery Space Claim Live and AIM. Discovery La uh, Space Claim is a geometry-based product, very good in additive manufacturing. It can build facet data for you, as an example. And then Discovery Live is the GPU accelerated simulation. And then Discovery AIM is a third product I haven't really covered here today, but it's a high-fidelity multi-physics solution, solution that maybe once you've got the end of your uh, chosen design, you do a full fidelity um, run to check that it's a precise representation from a performance point of view. 
We released this product about a year ago, got some great quotes in the marketplace. Um, you know, looks like Ansys has actually figured out how to perform real-time simulations. If anyone has an interest in this, I would encourage you to come and see uh, the actual product running. It, you get that wow reaction when people actually see it. Um, obviously, a lot of us in the marketplace can talk, can, can use our marketing slogans, ease of use, very fast. I would encourage you to come and have a look if you've got an interest in this area. Even if you're using competitive technology, I think it will answer, ask some questions of uh, that current process and whether this will be interesting to you. As I say, I would have loved to demonstrate live, so I would have done the demonstration. I could have shown you something in two minutes uh, that would have proved the point. Uh, we are on stand two, 1004 in the far corner. Please come across and have a look if uh, anything is of interest. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. So, um, also, uh, my, my first question would be, why now? In 2000, I have written my diploma work about uh, parameter optimization. So, um, is it now the time for optimization that's uh, breaking through and we use it more in the, in the industry? What is your intention about this? Yeah, I mean, the theory's been around for um, 10, 20, 30 years. Uh, so, the mathematics has been able to deliver this. Um, uh, from my, I'm slightly biased, of course, in terms of the approach we've taken with ANSYS, but the fact we've delivered capability on a standard PC, a standard laptop, without having to access uh, expensive software, expensive HPC. Um, you know, if you did use multi-objective optimization, you'd often have an HPC environment um, costing many hundreds of thousands of euros. Uh, this is available at very low cost on a standard machine. Um, adding the ease of use, I think, opens it up to your non-simulation expert. So from that point of view, it becomes more of a commodity tool, uh, and anyone could use it. Yeah. OK, thank you very much. Are there questions out of the auditorium? Questions about topology optimization or other optimizations? If this is not the case. Um, so you said uh, you're on the market since one year. So yep. you have the first uh, customer feedback, so to say. Did they save really a lot of money? Or what do they say? Or, or do they just start with the software? It's typically time. So this is actually a customer example. This is the Rosignol skis. Um, so every season, Rosignol redevelop the ski because they have to come up with a new idea to get people to buy new skis. Their development time scale is about three months. Um, because they obviously then have to manufacture and get it out to the suppliers. Uh, and this particular ski tip, you can sort of see this hex constructor. They used one of those lattice structures inside a bonded layer, um, and they ran through many, many more iterations. So there's a video on ANSYS's website on Rosignol, and they said they, they literally couldn't have investigated the number of geometry options in any other technology they've seen or, or used in the past as quickly as they were able to do with this. So it basically just shortened the timescales, was very accessible, and en enabled them to come out with a new design they, they needed in order to you know, beat the market and do something different. So time is probably, the, I think, the, the best value or best uh, result that people are getting, compressing that timescale. Yeah, OK, good. Then Again, thank you very thank much. You very much. You're available here the next day, I guess. Yep. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you very much again. Thank you very much, everyone.